Well, hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So today we're going to take a look at this personal stereo and it's a PSR 70 by Boots. And this was from the 1980s, back when Boots, especially here in the UK, wasn't just a pharmacy. It was really a place where someone of my age anyway, it was a wonderland of toys and gadgets. So I could get transformers in there and all sorts of stuff, including personal stereos and things like that. Now, obviously, at that age, I couldn't afford to buy any of that stuff. It was normally walking around with my mum, who was sort of buying perfume or lipstick or whatever at the time. But I used to get to go and uh, have a look at all the gadgets anyway. So that kept me happy as a as a young lad. Anyway, I digress. So what do we know? Well, this one came in as part of a consignment. And I recently worked on another unit from the uh, from this particular consignment which was the Welltech shower radio so do check out the video on, on the repair or at least restoration of that one so this one now is as I say the boots one in charcoal if the box is to be believed so as a delightful picture of is that two no it's a, it's a man and a woman there sat there look, gazing into each other's eyes probably holding one of these wonderful boots personal stereos yep they're plugged in they're wired for sound so what do we know? It's uh, three volts, two AA batteries, and it's got fast forward and play. So it may not have a rewind facility. It does, however, have a stereo head, stereo cassette, and AM, FM radio. Apparently, originally, it did have, oh, there's our lovely looking people look there with their units. That's rather nice. So it did also come with lightweight headphones, but I've not opened this box yet, so I can't tell you for sure what's in here. So let's let's have a look carefully does it oh and i did just notice uh as per the i think it was a spielberg film of the time batteries not included because this was the golden age of course where all of a sudden these portable wonderful gadgets were becoming easier to get hold of and they were all over the telly for christmas and that sort of stuff and um everyone was crying out mom i want this mom i want that and uh you know of course they never came with batteries did they so by about half past ten on Christmas morning, everything was dead and nothing worked anymore and the shops were closed and you couldn't get any more batteries. But anyway, there you go, digressing again. So, here's the personal stereo player sheet of instructions. Again, what I loved about all the old stuff, look, is it used to even tell you how to set it up, how to, what to clean, you know, the head and the pinch roller and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, also got a warranty, which no doubt has long since, long since expired. And it does say about the, the jack there, it's a five and a half mil DC jack. I'm not sure yet whether it's centre positive or centre negative, but we'll find that out when we look at the unit. Speaking of which then, here we have, well, it's either the stereo or a Big Mac meal. I'm not sure yet, or kebab. But believe it or not, this is the original packaging. And uh, there we go, look at that. Very nice, that's quite cool actually. So here, here are indeed the lightweight headphones as promised. So we'll take a look at those first actually. So they look rather like, rather like the Sanyo ones of the time actually, that simple metal band left and right on there. And uh, yeah, the foams have stood the test of time. They've not disintegrated, so that's, that's great news. And also the stereo jack, if we can just see that there, isn't all bent and twisted. So there's a fair chance we'll be able to use those headphones. That's great. Also, we've got the original strap here with its little adjustment tabs and it's still stapled closed in its original bag. So it's never been, it's probably never, well, so it's never been used. The, the strap's never been used. And I'd imagine the unit itself probably hasn't had that much wear. So let's take a look at it now. Alrighty, so PSR 70. It has, yep, simple tape and a radio. So it'd be a bit more, I suppose, like a Sanyo MGR 59 or something like that, MGR 66. So you've got a main cassette unit there and then the radio runs across the top. There is no no viewing window for the tape, I know, uh, for the radio. I notice it just, so you read it off, off the dial somewhere. There is no... There's no sort of reference mark as far as I can tell, unless I'm missing something obvious. But there's no window to see. There's no sort of dial cord or anything like that to go wrong by the looks of it. Anyway, AM and FM across the front just there. And there's, there is indeed your 
the tuner does work well at least the, the control does work now i see a remnant there of possibly a label or just might just be some tape I'm not sure may have been a reference label with a point for the the channel selection but might just be the might just be some sellotape uh what else so yeah very very simple stop fast forward and play so that's all there is to it a removable belt clip so again you just push that down and slide that away simple as that just as you would do back in the day so you've got a master switch there for our tape and radio ah i see so to save money on print or stickers everything is embossed in the plastic so or molded into the plastic anyway so you've got a tape and radio master switch just there we've got the dc three volts which i can now tell you is a positive center pin you can probably see that there then your volume min the max and your simple single three and a half mil headphone jack just there so there we go then that's all we seem to seem to have on the face of it whether or not it works is another story though looks fairly clean and tidy inside don't know if you can see that just yet but we might get a closer look later but anyways that doesn't look too bad i've got to say certainly good enough to be able to put an old tape in to try it in a minute and then in here quite unusually actually is line stern batteries there so three volts so we should be able to try that now actually yeah usually the well quite often the stereos of that time were sort of stacked one way or the other but these ones are in line so we'll get these batteries in whoops oh, it's one of those where we're going to have to put the cover back on because they want to fight to jump out again right okay here we go so let's just see if it'll play first mm, nothing at all completely dead because it's not an fm stereo or is it there's no light there to tell me as far as i can see so what i'm gonna do is just hook this up to um to some speakers a second got some trusty old jsx 37s here from Sanyo. So I'm just going to plug these in just so we can. Where did we say that was there? Right, let's just see if we can put this on radio. Just trying to find my way around. It's actually quite difficult to navigate this because everything's on different faces and nothing's got a label on the outside. So that I believe was your right radio volume minimum. So if I put volume to halfway and now try and tune it. yeah there's nothing at all nothing at all on the radio and nothing at all on the tape so on the face of it it's completely dead now i know the batteries are good in fact i only just used them on a restoration an hour or two ago uh the battery contacts look good as well so yeah this this might be an interesting one so i think what i'm going to do next in this situation oh no there we go ha huh. what was i just saying might have been a tiny bit of surface corrosion on the batteries i've just given their cursory little wiggle and reinserted them and there we go we're away we're in business so the play works fast forward it hesitated then but play stop fast forward stop fantastic okay obviously there's no cassette in there yet so what we'll do now is put this onto fm i don't know if the reception will be any good because obviously normally you use the headphone aerial as the uh, or the headphone cable as an aerial but we've just got these speakers laid out on the table here but we'll give this a go see see if we can hear right where's the radio switch gone uh there we go and volume where is everything everything's disappeared there right okay tune in so i'll just go to one end and sweep it nice and again another one another one again another one 
And again, tell you what, there's loads of, loads of stations on there, so I'll just try AM, see if that works. Yeah, straight away. So I'll just turn that off for a minute. Again, how do I find it? There it is. Yeah, so, so far, I could tell then that the left and right were both working. So we've got stereo, so there's no issues with the output jack. Feels a little bit loose, but um, we might need to reflow that when we go in, just to make sure the joints are okay. But yeah, that's great. So let's just try the tape now then. So I'll find an old tape. No, you've got to laugh now. Do you remember these guys, Robson and Jerome from Soldier Soldier? I'm delighted and honoured to tell you I didn't buy this. It actually came with a personal stereo or something that I bought a while ago. But it's great because it means I've got an old one I don't care about. I can just put it in here and if it chews it up. Sorry about that, boys, but it's chewed. Anyway, here we go. Oh. Wow, well, that seemed to work actually, which is which is fabulous. Now I do have another tape, which I know is not going to get me any copyright issues. So I'm going to put that one in and be able to check the uh, the actual speed with this as well, really. Well, there we go. So fast forward. Stop, play. I just want to walk in yesterday's shoes. Okay, so that's that one. Yep, yeah, so it's sounding like it's going to be all right, you know. So I think, on the face of it, the pots aren't too scratchy. The aerial's working, or at least the, the radio's working. The cassette seems to be working. So there we go then, that's great news. It'll need a good polish up. And what I will do is test the head, I won't test the head headphone out, we know it works, but we'll take a headphone out and actually hear it properly and we'll digitally record this. So I'll overlay the MP3 at the end so you'll be able to hear exactly how the output sounds in real time from the head. Um, and yeah, that'd be great. I think what I might just do then is crack it open, have a look inside. We'll just show you around, see what's actually inside the unit for anyone that's interested. And if we can get to it nice and easy, we might just put a new fresh belt in anyway, just in case. And we'll clean the head and the capstan, the pinch roller, and just generally buff it up and give it a polish. And that'll be that. So, right, onwards, let's get it open then. I did just try it with headphones and noticed that actually one of the speakers or one of the outputs is intermittent. So I'm just going to try this again. Yeah, see, we don't have that channel now. We've got one channel, that one there, but not that one. So if I move this now. There. I can hear it, I can also feel that through my fingertips, so I know that one's working. And then there you go, it's gone again. On and off so i thought it was all working fine and it was at the time but of course as soon as i moved it actually it's not working so we may we may have to service the headphone jack on this i'm hoping it probably just needs to be reflowed quite often what happens with these old personal stereos is of course they live in people's pockets and stuff and if you can imagine it they you know they just get wiggled around in there there's a lot of wear and tear and it just tends to work one or more of the contacts loose on the circuit board. I have even known on some Sanyo units that I've worked on that even the traces themselves have become cracked inside where it mounts onto the headphone jack. So we'll take a decent look at that whilst it's open. Okay, good stuff. Okay, so I've just got the batteries out and I've put this on an old towel now just to stop any scratches. Quite a long screw actually that for a personal stereo these ones obviously go right the way through be interested to see how the radio circuit works on this or at least how the tuning gauge works it must be directly linked to the tuning cap i think because there's no there's no sign of, of a dial cord so we just have to be careful when we open this up ah there we go just tabs just tabs right okay 
So a couple of screws over there. So here's your, here's the back molding then. Just a simple lightweight case to house the batteries and of course the belt clip. So we can put that to one side now. Okay, so, well, we were saying about the belt, weren't we? So there we go. Doesn't get any easier than that, to be honest. So there's, there's one belt. There is another one under there as well, which we can probably, probably get to, possibly get to, I should say. Um, it was running actually okay, to be fair. So I'm not, I might let sleeping dogs lie. I'm just having a look at it. And if you can just see it there, it's turning really nicely. And it's got some great tension and great elasticity and there's no signs of perishing or anything. So I'm not going to go in there and sort that for the sake of doing it. Might just put a new belt, a new main drive belt on though, given that, given that that one's off now anyway. Right, okay. So what do we know? I don't know if you'll be able to see this from here. I'm going to try and zoom in as best I can. So the headphone jack is just there. And we've got the mounting solder joints are basically on here. But if we look at this one, hang on, there we go. Can you see there's a fine crack all the way around between the actual one of the tabs of the jack and the solder joint, the solder pad? So I'm just going to plug a headphone the speakers back in. You may even see a tiny bit of movement. Let's have a look. Mm, I think I can, but it might be the Emperor's new clothes. I'm not sure yet. But in any event, ah, there you go. Look, you can see that. You can see it there. So I reckon if we just reflow that joint, that will solve the intermittent headphone issue. Um, everything else was running fine. The tape speed was good. The belt was fine. As I say, the, the, the belt underneath is absolutely fine. I'm not going to change that because it's working perfectly and it's in good condition. This one's also working perfectly and in good condition. It's not even that tear dropped, but I'll put a new one on now just because we, we, we've got it out. Yeah, so just reflow that joint and literally put it together and give it a, give it a polish and then we'll plug it in, I think, and capture an MP3 from it so you can hear how it should sound. So I've just got another belt for it. So the original one had a slight teardrop in it. Not too bad, to be honest. It really wasn't affecting the uh, the playback too much, really, because it's still quite a supple, decent belt, really. But I've just got a replacement anyway. Might as well, whilst we're, whilst we're at it, as it were. So we'll just pop that on now. And... That's it. Fine. So that's that little issue sorted, if you can call it an issue. But the main thing now really is to get on and just reflow the joint there for the headphone. And we should be in business. So I only really need to reflow the one joint that's obviously damaged. You can probably hear the birds walking on the roof overhead. But that should be all it needs. There we go. Well, I've got every faith in that now, so we'll get the cover back on, I think. And as I say, the pots weren't scratchy or anything like that, so there's no real reason to start flooding it with contact cleaner or anything like that. However, just before, I think just before we... Uh, actually bolted all up as it were we will just check it to make sure it's okay so here's the uh, runaway battery little gag again all right let's get them in before they jump out make a bid for freedom right so that's that and then if we just connect up the speakers one more time this time uh, we should be okay so i'm just going to put that cassette in also we get to check the new belt as well now don't we so Kill two birds with one stone now. So cassette in, play, and I'm hoping two things will happen here. We should get a nice running cassette and we should also get stereo output from the headphone jack. So let's try this. Play. 
Okay. Two for two. So the tape is running well. Just turn it down again. Okay, so the tape is running well. Yep, no warble, no, no problems with the speed or anything. And then channel one. Channel two. Yep, that's it. And if we wiggle the control around, you can see that there's nothing wrong with that now. Let me just stop that. You can see that it wasn't coming and going, and that's because it was literally down to a dry joint there on the board, which we've now sorted. Magic. So all that remains now then is to give her a polish and plug her in so you can have a proper listen. Before I do anything else though, I'm just quickly going to clean the head on this one. Same old story, just a little bit of denatured alcohol there. And on the capstan, on the head, and also on the pinch roller, by pressing play, by partially pressing play, you'll expose the pinch roller enough to get to it to clean it without actually pushing it against the capstan and preventing it from turning. As it happens, this one is very clean. Tiny little bit of ferrite residue on there, but I've got to be honest, it's uh, I've seen a lot worse. So I'm just going to carry on and do this for two minutes and then we'll give it a polish. Just giving this a wipe with a damp cloth to start with. On some units, you can actually polish away with some cutting compound and get fine scratches out and stuff. But I'm a bit worried that some of this might actually be printed on the top of the uh, plastic. And also there's like a metallic like charcoal grey metallic -y paint as well on the top. So, um, yeah, there's no point polishing this. I think that's actually sellotape, that residue just there, by the way. I have got some old sticky stuff remover here, so I might actually just get a bit of that on there as well. But anyway, as I was saying, I'd normally use a car cutting compound or something to, to get the plastic up really nice. There aren't many places of exposed plain plastic on this, so I think this is literally just going to be a nice hygienic wipe down, get the sticky, sticky goo off and maybe some vinyl cleaner just to dress it and not forgetting to put those two screws back in the back as well. And so here it is then, the PSR 70 from Boots, all the way from the 1980s. A lovely little radio cassette player in the end. So this came as part of a consignment and hadn't been tested. So I thought it'd be quite nice to open it up and share it with you today. Not too bad to be fair, pretty clean and tidy. A few little scrapes and some sticky residue and stuff on there. And it seemed to be okay. It didn't want to play ball after batteries to start with. And the terminals were only just slightly corroded, I think, but that soon came off, didn't it? So we've cleaned the head, cleaned the capstan and the pinch roller. And by and large, it didn't seem to be running too bad. But once we took it off to have a look at it, we did replace the main drive belt. It wasn't in terrible condition, but put a fresh one on now just to give it a few more years of life. The radio is working absolutely beautifully, so that's all good. The only major problem with it really was that the headphone jack was broken, it was intermittent and we found a dry joint on the board. So by reflowing that, we've solved the problem instantly and now she's running a treat. So she's cleaned up, polished up beautifully, the head's been cleaned, the new belt on there and the headphone socket has been repaired. So all in all, just a couple of little housekeeping jobs really, nothing major. But now she's fully fit and ready to go. So I think what we'll do is we'll plug it in properly, capture some MP3 of the actual head output from the unit and see what you think. 
but that's all I've got for you today. So do just stay tuned for the last couple of minutes to hear it in action. But please do subscribe and I shall see you soon. Hit the notifications bell for updates. We've got a bunch more stuff coming up soon. So thanks for your time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. the light I want to look into your eyes tonight search your soul and find the beauty within feeling our breath upon my skin I don't want to fight I want to lay the demons down tonight just let me take you in my arms and hold you tight Show you everything's alright Start a family